Hello, boys and ghouls. It's your goth, Oliver. I like immediately don't like that intro, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep. What should should I do? Like, hey, dogs and dandelions. It's your daring do batter, Oliver here. Like a bird moving around so much. Hey, bones and boners. It's your that, no, that's that's not the one. Hey, vamps and Franks. No. Vamp, vampire and, and Frankenstein? I don't know. I don't know. Boys and Ghouls is stupid. I need my own thing, and I don't have it. But I, like, I was trying to think of stuff like that, because you've probably already read the intro. If I've titled the video properly... It should be giving you a heads up as to what I'm going to be talking about. Of course, it's me, so it's going to be stu st st stupid stuff. Stupid, spooky stuff, anyway. So let's get into what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about Beetlejuice, which I don't think I'm allowed to say that two more times in the video. I think that's it. I only get two more, but the... Uh, Tim Burton directed Michael Keaton starring Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis starring as well as Winona Ryder Jeffrey Jones Catherine O'Hara I'm doing all this from memory by the way I'm not reading the list Catherine O'Hara right um, and who was Otho he deserves a uh, and now I'm now I'm looking this up Glenn Shandex was Otho yes but he deserves a shout out he was great Oh yeah, and Robert Goulet. I guess I'll mention him because now I'm looking at it. But uh, yes, as the all the a lot of wonderful cast. You should look up Dick Cavett. Yeah, and a lot of people that Tim Burton wanted in his movie, and cool people that he liked and could get as well. Um, but let's talk about the movie though, because. There is a sequel that's, I guess, actually finally happening. And I'm I'm a writer. Go figure. I do write uh, short stories. Some of those are out there. If people want to read some of them. If you ever wanted someone to write you a short film, I could write a short film. I could probably write a feature-length film. Uh, I've never actually taken the time to do that. I've never actually taken the time to write a novel, but I say short story because th those are the completed works I have done and have out there, but I know, uh, given the challenge, I could do something like that, and as well as I write uh, a column and an article. And I love championing for writers because that's where it comes from. Is It's not the actor. It's not the setting. It's not the director. It's you, you really need, at the very first thing for a story, is you need words on paper or words on a screen you need words. You need words written down. And, you know, it can start with a story. It can start with basic, and then a screenplay can be written from a, a, a story. Because you can have scenes and, and beats and things. And um, there's a lot of people that actually worked on and wrote the original uh, Beetlejuice. Two now? I'm only allowed one more, right? But let's uh, kind of mention them. Uh, one of them is Larry Wilson, screenwriter out of Los Angeles. He's done work on uh, Adam's Family movie, the 1991 Adam's Family movie, Little Vampire, uh, Year Without Santa Claus, Tales from the Crypt. Um, also, we had Warren Scarin. Scarin? Maybe I'm getting that name wrong. They passed away in 1990, so... Their career may have been cut short, but they worked on such things as Beverly Hills Cop 2, which is a pretty good movie. They worked on Batman with Tim Burton. Some cool stuff. And then there's uh, Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell has story credit and screenplay credit. And Michael McDowell is also an author. And I, I don't, you know, I don't know the process of how the film in question was written. But I like to think Michael McDowell having the two credits was more substantial in their contributions to the final work. And they have done a lot of spooky stuff work. You know, uh, uh, 
amazing stories. That's an anthology series, Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Dark Side. Oh, and Tales from the Crypt. Both. Uh, but anthology movies, Nightmare Before Christmas, also. Uh, another Tim Burton thing. They did uh, some work on Thinner, the Stephen King. And also, um, I believe they did some work on the cartoon adaptation of this movie that we are... To I, I've already said it more than twice, I feel like. I feel like it slipped out of my tongue. And I should just go for it and say it a third time. Uh, the movie we're talking about, yet again, because there's going to be a sequel, because there's going to be a Beetlejuice 2. So... That all said, uh, I'd love to give shout-outs to the writers and people that look up other people's work when they write something. Because they're not always brought back when they do a sequel. Is, I didn't mention some of them for Batman Returns. I didn't mention them, some of them in Adam's Family 2. Like, you bring on different writers, but that's the thing about writing. Is sometimes when you figure something out once, another writer can come in and go, well, now, now I know how to write for that. Like Now that you've sort of got the actors in place and the settings and all this, yeah, I can watch the first one and make a new thing w with some of the, these pieces. So it's really kind of cracking those first steps that can be the harder part rather than making a second one. That's the thing about sequels is they kind of are easier to write. And that's why I say uh, sequel to anything. You can make a sequel to anything. It's whether or not you get a writer to sit down and come up with a story because stuff always happens next. And saying someone's story is closed. That's why a lot of people end stories. I'm trying not to step on all the junk in my room. It's a lot of junk. Uh, give a give a preview of all that again. I've done. I've shown those off in other videos. There's always Easter eggs around too. I think there's something hiding in the background. But uh, stories always go on, even if someone dies. The world, the universe, has to end for there to not really be a potential sequel. But maybe it's. The, the sort of pinnacle most important story to tell was the one you told so it's like what other one are you going to tell so let's go over Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice let's go over the movie so we can go over what a sequel to the movie could be, I've already talked a lot already, wow, I have filled some serious time and if your name is time and you want to be filled We do this in the raw. I don't know if people know my video style that I'm doing now. I do have some notes in front of me, but I'm mostly it's just very open narrative. The way I do it is I just talk a lot. I have a very thick Californian accent, which means I can talk very fast, but I will try to talk in my slower style. So th the idea of doing another Beetlejuice, I think, was out of Tim Burton's hand at a certain point because he was busy doing various things you know batman batman 2 um i mean then he ends up doing like planet of the apes and i, I don't know what else he did in like the late night i guess he was in superman for a while and that didn't happen but the studio knew it was a budgetable thing like they could throw money at it and they would make money like that's th that's like easy to green light that there's there's merchandise there's i don't know they could revitalize a cartoon get that going that you could make this happen. And the, and the title character of Beetlejuice is what people know. So often, studios don't really make sequels to movies. They make sequels to the trailer. Because people don't remember movies. They don't know what movies are. And they just go, what was that again? And they, they want to see more of what they thought the movie was about. So RoboCop 2... It's an okay action movie, but boy, is it not a sequel to RoboCop 1. RoboCop 1 is an amazing movie, but RoboCop 2 is pretty much a sequel to the trailer for RoboCop 2. It's, 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 a, it's another movie for people who didn't really watch RoboCop 1, and it drops a lot of things. So Beetlejuice 2 with the, tr the sort of goes to Hawaii, like other ideas that were pitched, they all focused on the Michael Keaton character getting him back. I'm like, well, that's not really what a sequel should have been i mean really you should have gotten that family back the main characters of that movie are you know alec baldwin and gina davis and then winona Ryder getting the editors it and like those are the three main characters and sort of their story their arc of becoming you know connected and 
Beetlejuice is almost like Willy Wonka in a way where he's not the main character. It's like Charlie is the main character. The family's the grandpa's the main character. Willy Wonka is this entity that everyone knows, but he's not the one with like an arc and part of the story. He's just there. He's an entity. He's more of a plot element an aspect and he's fun I'm not trying to say like oh he's stupid like Beetlejuice is great everyone loves Beetlejuice I mean someone should count how many times I say it if it's divisible by three by the end of this that would be funny so how do you do another Beetlejuice like obviously you can pull that entity not bring back any of the other main cast, put him somewhere else. I'm like, yeah, I, I could probably think of a dozen different ways to do that. You basically just kind of do the same story again of people want to live in this home as ghosts and there's humans living there and Beetlejuice comes in and helps out. I'm like, you could probably spin this in a lot of ways to make it more um, like, like some emotional resonance or historical in some way you make it anti-corporate like, oh they're gonna build a big hotel here or they're gonna tear down this building or just all these various things of like what, what happens when they tear down a building like th those are interesting questions again about the sort of afterlife world that Beetlejuice was, was building Beetlejuice Beetlejuice was building like what what happens if the place that you're allowed to sort of stay in and is gone it's destroyed that's an interesting question. I don't know how interesting these questions can be, though, as far as, you know, a movie. And, and maybe if you made it about ghosts being able to connect with each other and maybe something happened and they lost one of the homes and they had this ability, like, I don't know, window to window, like these buildings were across from each other. It's like, well, that's where grandma lived. And that's where we can kind of communicate and all that. But we can't go outside because of the sandworms. Like, there's elements and things you could have in there. But then you're, you're introducing these new characters and you just know they're not going to get the screen time and the story when the, the title character, the one that really wasn't the main character in the first one, is going to be the main character. So that's probably why this, this all landed in development hell. And I'm going to sort of say like, yeah, you can, you can do anything. So there's that idea. Um, well, here's another idea that I had that you could have done with a Beetlejuice 2. So in the movie, we're introduced to Lydia, who moves in to the home that Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis. I'm not going to look up their character names, by the way. I'm going to keep calling them that. And there's the, the, the dad, and then there's the stepmom. So Lydia's mom is not there, and they never answer that question. As far as I could tell, as far as I could look up in the movie, and what's final in the script is Lydia's mom just isn't there. So they don't say if she's dead or if it's like like an like a divorce or what. So what would be interesting, I think, is to deal with that character. So there's two big options there. Is you could have her be dead and then you can explore that side. I don't think that's that interesting. I think what's more interesting is to have her be alive. And what if Lydia went to go stay with her mom? And what if the Gina Davis, Alec Baldwin character somehow through some sort of loophole, if you bring a table from the original home, like maybe a little like end table or like a pillow or just something small that they used to actually utilize in life, that then, hey, they can also be in this apartment temporarily. Maybe it's like how they go on, how ghosts can go on vacation. But you can look for things like that. That would be fun to play with. And I'm sure you could come up with a fun plot element surrounding that. Like how long does it last? How, how important was it to you? Maybe they tried it and it didn't work. Maybe it only gets one of the characters. It's like, well, did you ever use this end table? Like, I don't know. I guess not. I guess I didn't mean it. I don't know which end table. So, so then maybe you go back to Jeffrey Jones and Catherine O'Hara and, and the is like, can you ship to me? You know, something else like asking and they're like, what? And it's like they got a, a little minor subplot of shipping something. And maybe you could even see the ghost like stuck, like folded up contortion wise inside the box because they kind of are staying, they're possessing it. They're staying with it the entire way because it, you know, it didn't work. 
So there's fun elements to play with that because it's yet again about these characters. And then, of course, you're going to want to have Beetlejuice. So you get, a, it can be a similar thing of well, now it's Lydia's mom or she passed away. Maybe there's, maybe she remarried. Maybe she's going to remarry. Maybe it's a wedding. Maybe you want the wedding called off. Maybe you bring in Beetlejuice. So there's just, there's a lot of elements and things there. I keep saying the same stuff over and over. I'm not actually, anyway. But I just think that's, that was the, the opening. And you had kind of a 10-year-ish window to do a sequel. Because when Ona Ryan gets too old, you can't do. You can't sort of do this. I mean, you could lean into it. But I'm like, okay, they're going to do it anyway now. They're going to do like the daughter. Like they're moving way on rather than sort of continuing on with with what they had. And I don't imagine any of the other supporting people will be in it it would be really cool if gina davis was in it i don't feel like i've seen her in a movie in a while but i just i love the contrast they can do between having two ghosts that aren't that good at being ghosts that where you can have one succeeding and one failing and how you can constantly have those steps take place and just the idea of being stuck in one place like could, would they be can't ghosts go somewhere else can't you summon them somewhere else like what, could they do another seance with the you know the wedding outfits and all this but maybe it'd be more fun safe one like no this time we're not going to try to hurt them we're going to try to bring them here because Lydia is like I, I want you here I need you here to kind of see what's going on with with her real life mom like again I, I did try to look that up about you know wh what was actually said for her which is a pretty dark direction to go if you were to kind of actually confirm that her real life mother passed away but that's still also a completely interesting take then if you go that route of well then wouldn't she have grandparents is that is Lydia's real life mother would have real life parents and maybe there's an okay but strained relationship there but then you know their daughter's gone but then they have their granddaughter and just does mom ever haunt this place maybe she starts to think like oh, well, this is where mom grew up. Like, I want to get back there. Like, I, you know, the house is for sale that she grew up in and I need to try to do something to get there to see if there's any connection. And there's just all of this, this sort of opened door uh, possibility for Lydia to try to make the connection that she had with her mother with the new people that she was having a connection with. And wh how else could they try to buy the house that her mom grew up in than to get in... Beetlejuice. That's how you bring in the title character yet again. Is if that place was haunted, then maybe it could drive the price down. It could, you know, you could do all kinds of fun and games with that, while still anchoring with a continuation of the characters and their story and their arc and and the world that they established, without needing to go to Hawaii, because that's the big sequel idea that had floated around for forever was. Beetlejuice in Hawaii. So I don't know, again, where a sequel's going to go. I don't think it'll do any of these things. I don't think I'll touch on any of that, which is fine, but that's sort of my point is there's so much possibility. It's like now we're dealing with a much older Lydia, again, probably the daughter. I think Jen, Jen, Jenna Ortega, the girl that was Wednesday in the Wednesday show. So, But I, I don't know why they weren't able to ever crack the sequel idea other than budget, I guess, if they wanted to do it on, on the cheap and not bring back six or seven actors from the first one, just bring back Michael Keaton, just bring back the big title thing. And then, then you, then you have to write, then you have to come up with a good place for him to be, to bring him back and come up with a good story element for that. And also he is not exactly a good character. He's kind of a neutral character. He's not good or evil. He's very self-serving. But he drives a lot of the story as these characters came to conflict of trying to live in this home. So you, you kind of almost want him to succeed, though, if you do a sequel. You want him to scare everyone out. But you also want him to fail because he's not a great guy. So that ending where he's stuck in the waiting room, like that's kind of a good ending for him. So how do you get him to fail and succeed again? Like these are tricky ideas to have him help the main characters yet again succeed. And then he kind of needs to 
overstep again, try to get more out of it because that's who he is, and then fail yet again, and in a fun way. So like that, those aren't ideas I've come up with, but that's stuff that needs to be set up in the story, in the writing. And then cinematically, you can do all kinds of crazy creative stuff. So. So those are just sort of some ideas. I I love talking about movies and like sequels because I really think anything's possible. But I think more the core, the important thing is to always go to character. You look at what your characters had and that is, that's where you can take another step. And Lydia was the one, you know, going to school and growing up. She's the one that with the most steps you could possibly take. And in that 10 year period of being, you know, in college, post college, wh wherever, whatever, and then the relationship she had with having a stepmom, dad, and a stepmom, like explore that, explore the other side of this, and there's it opens up a lot of things. You don't have to lean back into the same exact setting, but you still get to bring the old characters. Like I think that's what's important is you don't want to do the same exact thing again, but a little familiarity is good. Way too much new can be bad. So, but I think when something's really marketable, you can, you can go entirely all new. So, you, you could have done Beetlejuice in just a completely different way of going into like an exorcist type story, possession type story, going into the afterlife, going into any weird crazy thing. But then it's a little too weird. And maybe people wouldn't like it. But I think the charm of the first movie is the fact that it was a bend of the norm which is what tim burton did really well back then is you know things like edward scissorhands and beetlejuice were they took the normal and the mundane and then went another way with it and that's what made it really fun so i said beetlejuice a lot who's who counted somebody post in the comments how much but that's sort of been floating in my head for a while sort of you could do a sequel to anything and that's that's sort of my thing Right now, it's writers, champion for the writers. Look them up, and I don't ever know how to end these things. I'm not good at endings. Beginning and middles, really good. But I've never died yet, so I don't know how to end. That is the end of everything, right? But thank you for listening. Uh, don't like this. Don't subscribe. Don't tell your friends. Don't comment. Or do those things. I don't care. Prove me wrong. <laughs>